Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Top Sports Network for this first round PIAA state matchup in the Class 3A for girls volleyball. We have a bit of a familiar uh, pairing here, a pair of Whippeal teams going at it here at Freeport Area Middle School. I'm Jake DeLuca. Joined beside me is Joe Rhodes, and uh, I'd say we're in for a show tonight, Joe. First of all, Jake, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, really, really appreciate the opportunity here to do a volleyball game with you. Uh, always love the, the banter, and uh, especially when the stakes are this high. We're in the state volleyball playoffs now, the district playoffs uh, in the rearview mirror, now the big trophy at stake uh, for all of these teams. As you mentioned, Jake, two Whippeal teams in Class 3A going to kick things off here in the first round. Uh, interestingly enough, all four of the Class 3 Whippeal teams in the bottom half of the PIAA bracket. So uh, it seems like the PIAA set things up for the uh, the Whippeal uh, the Whippeal folk to kind of uh, battle it out and kind of knock each other out. Uh, the latest you could see uh, Whippeal teams playing would be the semifinals. Uh, another game here in High Top Sports Network fe featuring one of those teams is the Armstrong Riverhawks as they uh, are playing at Conneaut. Up one set to none right now, Jake, in that one. But uh, if Armstrong were able to win that matchup here tonight and then the Hampton Talbots, the runner-up in the Whippy Old Championship uh, just a few days ago, those teams would square off in the quarterfinals. So as mentioned, to kind of starts this whole thing. Uh, the way the bracket is set will... Uh, definitely pin a lot of these Whippeal teams against each other, and the case is most certainly that here tonight between these uh, Yellow Jackets and Mustangs. Yeah, and if you take a look at the bracket, uh, we have a chance for a semifinal matchup here in the state playoffs to be between two Whippeal Class 3A teams. Uh, Armstrong, you said mention, or you mentioned going up against Conneaut right now on High Top Sports Network. Uh, the other Whippeal team that is in the playoffs today is uh, Hampton. They're going up against Dubois. So the winner of Dubois and Hampton will go on to play the winner of Conneaut and Armstrong. And uh, if we look at the matchup we have here tonight, Freeport and Plum, the winner of this game uh, will go on to play either Holidaysburg or um, Twin Valley. That's correct. So... Uh, yeah, we might have a familiar matchup, or Armstrong might have a familiar matchup in round two if Hampton gets it done and the Riverhawks get it done. But either way, uh, for the winner of tonight's game, whether it be Plum or Freeport, they're going to be going up against an unfamiliar foe in either Twin Valley or Holidaysburg. Yeah, and Twin Valley is certainly uh, a, a poke and maybe more unfamiliar uh, for Freeport and Plum than uh, Holidaysburg, considering Holidaysburg a District 6 school that, of course, borders District 7. Uh, also known as the Whippeal. Um, so certainly maybe a little bit of familiarity with Holidaysburg, Jake. We did look at the district brackets uh, earlier today, and I do believe that Holidaysburg was in a uh, a bracket with, I want to say, was it just three or four teams? Uh, it, it, it wasn't as many. Uh, certainly not a lot of big schools in District 6 uh, for Holidaysburg to compete against, whereas you look at a team like Freeport that got tested uh, not only in their semifinal game of uh, the Whippeal, um, semifinals, as mentioned, they played Armstrong five sets. That one had to go extra points. And then they had to go up against another section team that gave them fits throughout the regular season, Hampton, um, who they were able to down for that Whippeal championship. But I guess the moral of our story, for if we sound like we're talking in circles here, is that, you know, if you look at what the section was, and really Class 3A as a whole in the Whippeal this year, uh, it might have been the hardest uh, classification in any district in the state. And then to take it a step further, you could argue that that Freeport-Hampton-Armstrong section uh, could be the hardest or the most difficult and most competitive conference of any in Class 3A throughout the entire state. So those teams well represented in the bracket here tonight, Jake, uh, as you mentioned. Um, but, yeah, the winner of this one, of course, as you said, will go on to play either Holidaysburg or Twin Valley uh, in the next round, known as the quarterfinals. That'll be Saturday, November 13th. So... Kind of a uh, interesting way they do it. Every Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, uh, from this point out, will feature PIAA volleyball playoffs. That's right. And, uh, you know, you talked about the Whippeal championship game, Freeport coming out on top again. Uh, we were looking up at the banner and uh, saw it was six times in the past 11 years that these Freeport Yellow Jackets have won a Whippeal championship. Uh, that, that's pretty good, Joe. It, it's all right. Not bad. It's, I mean, it's okay. No, I'm just joking. No, that's phenomenal. Uh, I, w I would like to look 
and see the next closest uh, in terms of wins for a program. Uh, just winning in general. You look at the uh, the section titles. 17 straight. Yeah, 17 straight. And then you stagger pretty much Whitfield championships every other year. Uh, as we look over there, 2010, 2013, 2015, 16, 19, and now 2021 Whitfield champions here at Freeport. But let's not talk too much about them. Let's talk a little bit about Plum as well, a team that, you know, they weren't in that section with the uh, Yellow Jackets, Riverhawks, and Talbots. Yet they uh, they have something to prove here tonight. They they feel like they deserve in this conversation. Um, certainly uh, had an excellent year. We had got to cover them a couple times, I do believe, here on High Top Sports Network. Certainly for their Pink Out Night uh, at home, uh, we were super excited to do that. And um, once, while I'm thinking of it, I want to thank the uh, Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association for uh, contributing to tonight's broadcast and making uh, making it so we could cover that Pink Out Night. You know, a great relationship. I feel like we've uh, uh, made here with Plum and course here at Armstrong as well so it's neat from our perspective because we get to cover two teams that um, obviously we have some past knowledge of and and two teams that are kind of near and dear to high top sports network so um, again it's grateful you, you would invite me on tonight uh, really appreciative of that and uh, I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be than uh, calling a game here uh, at the hive with you here tonight Jake yeah, this is about as exciting as a Tuesday night ever really gets. <laughs> For, yeah. uh, a, a state playoff game. What else are you going to be doing on a Tuesday night than spending time with us here on High Top Sports Network, watching these two teams that battled so hard to get to this point, lay it all out for the biggest championship uh, in the state. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than the PIAA championship, and we have it here live on High Top Sports Network. And, Jake, yeah, we were talking about these teams, but some personal accolades coming down from the Whippeal uh, in regards to their all Whippeal teams. I think you have that information there, Jake. I do, Joe. Uh, Freeport had a pair of first teamers in Cassidy Dell, uh, their junior setter, or, yeah, their junior setter. And then Erica Lampus, the senior outside hitter, got first team honors. Uh, Plum with a lone first team representative, their middle hitter, a junior, uh, Danica Susco, on the first team. And then if we look at the second team, Freeport, also having a player in that Whippeal Class 3A second team in their libero, junior Ava Soilis. Scrolling down to the third team, we see Plum with their second representative in the all Whippeal team uh, in Grace Thompson. She's a senior right side hitter and defensive specialist. So we have a lot of uh, great individual players here as well as two great teams. Yeah, and, uh, you know, whenever you see a team with these uh, kind of season-long accolades, there's clearly going to be some names attached to it, and you just named uh, some excellent players there. And what's neat to see is you named a couple players that have kind of have emerged this year. Freeport known uh, uh, to be able to rebuild quickly, hence that ginormous uh, banner over in the far wall there, Jake, that says Freeport Volleyball tradition never graduates. And, boy, oh, boy, you talk about the – that statement being true with one program, it's these uh, Freeport Yellow Jackets. They just reload, uh, never really rebuild. Uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, Ava Soilis, the libero, having a huge year, really emerged uh, as a big part of their uh, game plan and, and their success. Uh, and that's what you see from Freeport year in and year out. You know, it's not a matter of having a rebuild. They reload and uh, always some familiar names. you you got Olympus on there, and we've seen quite a few of those over the years. And, Absolutely. And... Uh, those being attached to uh, some personal accolades, and that, that again, the case. But um, you're always going to see some uh, names emerge, and that's just the by a byproduct of uh, this, this Freeport program that always seems to get the best out of its players and, uh, and have very few lean years in between. Yeah, Coach Tom Phillips really does a great job uh, really immersing himself in the program from whenever these girls first start playing volleyball in their uh, younger middle school days to, uh, you know, following them along, making sure they're in that same system throughout. Whenever they get to varsity, they're ready to go. And I mentioned 17 straight section uh, titles for this Freeport team. If you're bad at math like me and Joe both are, uh, taking you back, they haven't not won a section title since 2005. Yeah, I was still in high school, so that, 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 that's how you know it was a while ago, Jake. Yeah, I think I was all of 10 or 11. Yeah, I'm sure you're a wonderful 10-year-old. But either way, yeah, it, right. that's just an unbelievable number right there. And um, you throw in six Whippeal championships in, uh, since 2010, as we mentioned earlier. That's pretty daggone impressive. Um, also impressive, Jake, 
is the response and the outpouring of uh, people really wanting us to jump back in for these PIAA playoffs. People, I'm sure by now know that we were unable to do the Whippeal playoffs. Uh, broke our heart, especially considering uh, there were a couple games that were audio only that we had the intentions on doing video broadcasts for. Um, that's another conversation for another night, but great to be back here and great to see the response uh, from folks who wanted us to be here and as a result, giving us their hard earned dollars to come here and uh, pay to stream this because now we're at this level and we got to pay to to broadcast these but again very appreciative of these folks uh tonight's scoreboard sponsors uh, sponsor excuse me sprankles neighborhood market in saxonburg douglas insurance right here by the high school marie and the folks steffi's country catering the best caterer i've ever known uh we serve first foundation tim toy and the fine people over there and again the plum girls volleyball boosters association we did uh we did that uh, game with them earlier in the year, and um, and they felt inclined to um, to contribute to tonight's broadcast, and we could not thank them anymore. Uh, and that means a, a ton to us that um, that uh, we did a good enough job that you thought coming back to us and contributing to our cause uh, was necessary. So thank you so much again to the Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association, the We Serve First Foundation, and Tim Toy, uh, Steffi's Country Catering, Douglas Insurance, and Sprinkles Neighborhood Market. Thank you again so much. And folks, whenever you need to um, get groceries or get your insurance or get catering, um, make sure you go to these fine folks. They're the ones that make this possible to make uh, make it uh, possible for us to cover and broadcast these games. Without them, we would not be able to do so. So please keep them in mind uh, when you are in need of their services. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Joe. I mean, those businesses make it so we can do what we do here today and uh, follow these teams throughout their playoff journey. And, uh, you know, we couldn't do it with the help from people like you at home as well, the people that uh, go ahead and hit that donate button and uh, give whatever they can. You know, we appreciate it all. And it, it really helps us to be able to go out here and cover these state playoff games because, you know, there's a bill we got to foot with the, with the district or with the PIAA. And, uh, you know, the people that sponsor us, the people that click that donate button, uh, really help us out to make it so we can be here to cover such a monumental game. Yeah, and we're about 10 seconds away, Jake, so I'll hand it back over to you. But, uh, yeah, well said, and thank you again to everybody who has contributed in making this possible. We are glad to be here, and we'll be here until uh, they tell us we can't be anymore. That's right. And then we still might show up. <laughs> I believe we might have a national anthem singer, fingers crossed. People always ask, why don't you play the national anthem? And unfortunately, there are so many copywritten or copyrighted versions of it that we can't play it or else our broadcast could get taken down on some of our social media platforms. I do believe tonight we might have a singer for it. And if that is the case, you will hear it along with the starting lineups. Otherwise, we will have to mute you out and we apologize for that, but we will be back after that either way. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll find out as you do. Getting rolling here. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Freeport Area Middle School, where this evening we kick off the first round of PA State Playoffs. This evening, the reigning Whippeal champion Freeport Lady Yellow Jackets host the Lady Mustangs of Plum. At this time, would you all please stand, gentlemen, kindly remove your hats and join senior Ella Kreitzer as we honor America with the singing of the national anthem.
And a shout out to uh, Freeport senior Ella Kreitzer for the national anthem. I don't think she was a senior, was she? That's what they said. Was it? Okay. I'm hard of hearing, Jake. So Plum now announcing their lineup here for tonight. Now they go through the entire lineup here. Number 10, Grace Thompson. Number 1, Emily Bologna. Number 26, Samantha Glatz. Number 6, Maya Nunenberg. Number 17, Danica Susco. Number 12, Maria Hunter. Number 23, Madison Johnson. The Plum Lady Mustangs are coached by head coach Kelsey Baum, assisted by Rachel Satira. Good luck, Lady Mustangs. And now, the Freeport Lady Yellow Jackets. Number two, Jaden Gaylock. Number three, Ruby Fjorer. Number five, Isabel Barton. Number six, McKenna Desort. Number seven, Amber Shirey. Number eight, Olivia Smedek. Number nine, Sylvia Kreitzer. Number 11, Natalie Bolick. Number 12, Hadley Heldren. Number 14, Erica Lampas. Number 15, Elena Whitlinger. Number 18, Kayla Carnahan. Number 19, Autumn English. Number 21, Samantha Wysett. Number 23, Cassidy Dell. Number 24, Josephine Russo. Number 25, Liga Schreckengoss. Number 31, Ava Soilis. Number 32, Ava Dreyer. Number 42, Grace Beach. And number 87, Sydney Selker. And those are your starters here for tonight's PIAA first round matchup. And Joe, a quick update from the other first uh, round matchup we have here on High Top Sports Network. All knotted up at a set of peace between Armstrong and Conneaut. That is correct, Jake, and they are in set number three there. Armstrong leading five to one in that one. So if you are a fan of class three uh, or Whippeal class three A volleyball, uh, you will keep your eyes peeled on that one. Armstrong up five to one in set number three. Uh, that one, though, overall tied up at one set apiece. We will keep you updated on that as uh, we get information on it, a.k.a. I look at my cell phone because we're broadcasting that. Boom. <laughs> yeah, not, uh, small flex, as the kids say, right? Or what do they say? The flex. It's some sort of flex. It's a flex. Yes. There's also a cap involved. Something. Sometimes there's no caps. Who Sometimes knows? there is a cap, uh, but Michael, either way. Harry Styles in the house is always here, Jake. That should be noted. That's right. Cardboard cutout, Dressed Harry up. Styles. Yep, uh, the rest of the uh, Freeport uh, student section uh, ready for Christmas already. That's right. Yes, yeah, so they're donning their Santa hats and Christmas sweaters. And uh, they are out in full support of their volleyball team. Very festive. Enjoy it. Looks like Plum's going to start off with the opening serve, and that's going to be Maya Nonnenberg. Nonnenberg serves the first one across the net. And a great kill there by Cassidy Dell, one of the two first teamers. In Class 3A for the whip you'll hear for these Freeport Yellow Jackets. Gets the first point on the board. Yeah, Cassidy Dell, hard to argue that she might not be this team's most valuable player overall. She does it everything. She's in the action every game. Just an impressive, uh, impressive year for that young lady. Hit over there by Danica Susco, or hit into the net, rather, as Freeport quickly up 2 to nothing here in the opening set. Service specialist Leah Schreckengoss at the service line. And a miss received there by Grace Thompson. Puts Freeport up three early. Yeah, Jake, and uh, we know that I think everybody 
would consider Plum the underdogs in this one, and this is not the kind of start you want to see if you are, in fact, the underdog here, falling behind 3-0 in the first set. Shrek and Goss serve, received on the other end there by Grace Thompson and hit across by Thompson. Set by Shrek and Goss, and another kill goes to Cassidy Dell. Yeah, again, just a player that kind of does it all. One of those players that every coach would clearly love to have on their team. Can pass the ball well, can receive the ball well, and has evidence right there. Can certainly send the ball flying for a kill. And that one will be hit into the net by Danica Susco again. So really early on here, Joe, a lot of maybe state playoff jitters being shown here by this Plum team. Yeah, certainly. And... Um, there can maybe some more a little bit unfamiliar territory for them as compared to the Yellow Jackets, but this team certainly has the skill to compete in a game like this. It's just a matter of maybe reining in those nerves. Bumped up there by Erica Lampus, looking for Selker, received on the other end by Bologna, and just hit a little too high over the head that time on the set to Danica Susco. And um, we gotta, gotta wonder whenever uh, Kelsey Bonk is gonna decide to use a timeout here. Team down 6 nothing. Maybe looking for that coach's timeout. That one into the net, kept alive, but the officiating crew is going to call it a double hit there on the Mustangs and right on cue there, Joe, a timeout taken by the Plum Mustangs. And as I, I, have to, I have to say, you talk about taking a timeout, we'd obviously thank sponsors here right now, and I'm going to thank a sponsor who literally just stopped by with an envelope clearly uh, with their contributions for tonight's broadcast. And those are the fine, 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 fine people at the Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association. The Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association is pleased to be a sponsor for this evening's broadcast. The Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association is dedicated to supporting a, ladies must, a lady Mustangs team, which shared the Whippeal 3A Section 1 title with Franklin Regional and Indiana and are playing in their first state playoff game since, guess when, Jake? 1995. So the uh, Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association would like to wish both teams the best of luck in tonight's PIAA playoff matchup. Thank you so much. Uh, timing is everything, and they drop off an envelope like that, and that was a very kind of them to do. Uh, we certainly appreciate their contributions here on High Top Sports Network. Absolutely love the people from Plum and their volleyball boosters. Always treat us well. Shrekking Goss with another serve, received once again by Thompson. And another miss hit ball there by Susco, and that's unfortunately kind of been the tail of the tape early on here. Yeah, and you got to imagine this team's going to go as she does, and she is kind of that motor and that engine that uh, drives this team and everybody kind of feeds off of. So the sooner they can get her into gear, the better off the entire Mustangs team will be. Great dig there by Selker to keep that alive for Freeport, and then that's eventually hit over by Bologna. Set by Shrek and Goss, looking for Dell. Good dig there by Nonenberg. Joust in front there. Ball still alive on the rally. Selker just going to hit the free ball over. Quick set there by Mamatas. And that one hit out of bounds. But, you know, now we're starting to see kind of a sustained rally going on between these both teams. Yeah, Jake, that's a good point. That was about as fluid as we've seen Plum here uh, so far this evening. So hopefully that's a sign of good things to come for the Mustangs. Bologna with the kill. Saw Lampus try and go down low to dig that one out, but Plum finally on the board after allowing nine straight points to start this match. Yeah, that looked pretty fluid there too. Great pass, great uh, job by Bologna to catch that at its peak and squeeze it between that strong Freeport defense. Glatz's serve across the diving dig there from Lampus again, but the kill will go to Susco, and he's starting to heat up a little bit here. Yeah, and I thought for a second that uh, Lampus was going to be able to dig that one out, even though Susco caught all of it. Um, but uh, too much power behind that one, and Plum now with two straight points. Dell going to set that one up for Selker. Nice dig there by Plum. The set and the hit across that time by Thompson. Dell with the set to Selker. And that one will fall down to the court for a point. Diving after it that time was Maya Nonnenberg. Nearly got to it, but just not enough time. There's the good and the bad right there of a wall. You see that it can be effective and help maybe slow down this high-powered Freeport team. But deflecting and kind of just dropping right over that wall in that no-man's land in the middle of the defense. And once again, that's going to be a point for Freeport. This time, it's Russo. 
And we got we talked a little bit to Tim Toy or with Tim Toy who dropped off these wonderful T-shirts. He of course is tonight's uh, uh, player of the match sponsor, and he talked about how great uh, Russo has been as a middle blocker for this Freeport team. Something he noted when he covered them in the Whitfield Championship. And that was Susco once again with another kill. Soilus trying to dig that one out, but that ball flying in there with a lot of heat. And, you know, Danica Susco, the lone first teamer uh, in the Whitfield Class 3A uh, All-Stars for Plum, showing you exactly why here early on. Dell with the quick set, looking for Russo. Blatz gets it across there for Hunter. Dell, quick set to Russo again, and Russo able to keep that one in, dancing with that far sideline. That point had a lot to do with Russo, had the big block there on the kill attempt, and then gets it right back on the offensive side of things and able to send that one on home. Just uh, showing great skill on both sides of the uh, net there was Russo. Sidney Selker with the serve, received on the other end there by Nonnenberg, and then hit across by Hunter. Dug out by Selker, quick set there by Dell, looking for Lampus. Glatz going to set it across there, but before that happens, they're going to get Glatz with a double hit. Yeah, I saw that one right away, and uh, it's the, the, the great thing about watching the volleyball as we do now, Jake, uh, seeing that double hit uh, was pretty evident right off the bat, but tough break for the Mustangs. And a sneaky little point there for Plum to get them back onto the scorer's board. Nine-point lead here for Freeport. I believe it was nine to nothing, if I'm not mistaken there, that Jake. Is correct. And yeah, and now we got a 13 to four game, so certainly more competitive. Plum looking like the team that again did tie and uh, is a section champion. Del Russo, the connection hooking up once again. And yeah, Joe, since it was a 9-0 lead, it's been 5-4 in favor of Freeport. So you can definitely see Plum starting to settle in a little bit as we get further on into this first set. Much more tightly contested, though, for sure. And Thompson with the kill. Selker diving for the dig. But Grace Thompson, too much on that ball. And Plum clear with the, the athleticism here. They, they look like a team that can compete. Because if you're going to compete with Freeport, you need to be able to match that athleticism. And certainly, it seems as though Plum... Uh, has that, just uh, being as fundamentally and as sound as the Yellow Jackets. And then speaking of Freeport, a mistake made there, kind of, I think what happened was that uh, Hadley Helgren thought that ball was going to go over the net, but it stopped just shy. Yeah, that's a good call, Jake. Soilus bumps that one up, looking for Lampus. She hits it back row to Susco. Quick set and then hit across by Bologna. Selker with the dig, quick set by Dell. That one bounces off the hands of a plum player, and Helgren gets the point. Yeah, tough play there, but uh, you talk about all these pieces in the depth, and that's another thing that Tim Toy spoke to us about before this game, and just an expert in all things volleyball here in the Whippeal, and talked about just the depth that this Freeport team has, and throw Helgren in there as somebody with size who can play up front at the net, and uh, man, oh man, talk about a wealth of goods for these Yellow Jackets. And that will be Dell with the kill. And, Joe, just to kind of expand on your... Uh, I think they're going to give that point to the uh, Mustangs. Oh, it looked like must have been just a little outside of that near sideline there. But at this time of year, you don't see teams rotating a whole lot. Uh, they usually stick to their core. Uh, six that are out there, maybe have a service specialist come off the bench. But Freeport, you see them uh, already with some substitutions and some rotation changes. Just like you said, like Tim Toy said, just the depth of three ports really unmatched. Yeah, and that's a, a really difficult thing to to find. Uh, some teams are lucky to have six players they can um, reasonably rely on. And certainly for Freeport, uh, there are some young ladies that are going to sit an extended period of time on the bench here tonight that uh, a lot of other teams would be happy to have in their uh, normal rotation. So a... Uh, Surplus of goods for these uh, Yellow Jackets seems to be the case every year. Natalie Bullock with the serve, and then that's eventually pushed across by Thompson. Bumped up by Lampus, looking for Dell. That one deflects off the fingertips there of Maria Hunter before falling down for another Jackets point. They extend their lead to 11 now. 
Yeah, Cassie Dell looking sharp as always. Um, just fluid and just uh, as I said, hard to hard to deny that she might be the just the overall MVP of this team this year. A lot of good candidates though, certainly. Zalonia had to run up to save that one before the free ball was played across by Mamatas. And Dell with another rocket shot. Great dig by Susco. Bumped up by Freeport and then hit across by Selker. Thompson to Mamatas. And Bologna gets it across. It deflects off the Freeport player before Dell hits it back the other way and finds that far corner for the point. That was very similar to the play that Russo had earlier on, Jake, where she had the big block and you saw Dell do that there and then get it back on the offensive try and uh, convert the kill. So uh, just impressive how uh, just how sound on both sides of the net the, these Yellow Jackets are. Obviously, uh, big block and then getting to uh, getting rewarded with the a nice set and a kill opportunity, and Dell sending it on home. Yeah, they certainly look like district champions do Freeport. Yeah, most certainly. And again, Plum uh, has the unfortunate task, and uh, the bracket makers, I guess, out in Mechanicsburg uh, felt necessary to load up that lower part of the bracket with Whippeal teams, so there's going to be a lot of uh, beating each other up here over the coming days. Uh, again, first round today. Uh, the quarterfinals then will take place on Saturday uh, with the semis uh, a week from today on Tuesday. So you're going to see a lot of uh, Whippeal on Whippeal action here if the cards play out how we assume Hampton playing tonight as well. Uh, if Hampton would win out and the Riverhawks, who are up 23-11 to 11 in the third set, if they can win that one, they'll go up two games to one. Uh, again, if Armstrong wins that and Hampton wins their game tonight, that would be an Armstrong-Hampton matchup in the quarters. Ooh, a brutal miss hit there on the serve received by Julia Chapkis. And that's an ace for Natalie Bollock. But uh, that's kind of the last thing you want to see out of a timeout. You know, if you're the team that takes that timeout, you certainly don't want to give up an ace. Hoping for that coach's timeout. That's right. And another miscommunication as it looked like Marissa Mamata Mamatas was looking over for uh Looked like either Susco or Bologna, but neither one really ready for that ball. I could sit and listen to you read a dictionary. Hey, you know what? It'd be a blast. Maybe someday. That one, oh, they're going to mark that out. That That's one a good was call. close. Yeah, from my vantage point, it looked like it just missed. Uh, that gentleman right on top of it got kind of down on it as well and said that it was out, and I think that was the right call. You figure now in the state playoffs, you're going to get some of the best of the best as far as uh, the folks in stripes oh grace beach with a quick little push over the net nearly caught the plum defense off guard quick set by mamathas and just tapped across there by the mustangs beach setting that one up to selker and she reflects it off the hands of maria hunter and uh, also looked like got a piece of uh, mamathas as well yeah selker another one of those do it all kind of players great at on the serve receive we've seen her Get some excellent digs this year in particular, and uh, certainly can. Speaking uh, of great yeah. digs, Erica Lampus with one right there. And That's two hits. Nope, four. four hits. But, uh, yeah, certainly uh, a player that does it all. And talking to Doug Flanders, who's on the call right now with Josh Schreckengoss for that armstrong Cognac game, he said he thinks she's even a better softball player, Jake. She can pitch her, and she can... Really uh, got some fire behind her fastball. That's a scary thought. Selker gets that one blocked by Susco. Quick set by Dell, and I think they're going to get her with a double hit. Indeed, that will be the call. Yeah, you mentioned the block there by Susco. Also helping there was uh, Mamatas, um, the senior, stepping in there and kind of making that two-man wall. It looked pretty good here a couple times. And I think they're going to get a lift. Yes, indeed, that will be the call on Volick as that one kind of hit into her chest and deflected off of her uh, off her forearm back into the chest. Kind of lifted it up instead of just hitting it there. And back-to-back -back, kind of unforced errors by Freeport. Yeah, outside of that early Freeport 9-0 start, it's been a lot more competitive here uh, since then. That's why it's going to be really tough for Plum to get back in this one, Jake. But uh, certainly if they can carry over a little bit of this momentum into the second set, uh, and get off to a better start, uh, we could have a very interesting evening here at the Hive. Set point here for Freeport, 24 to 10. 
is the score as Schreckengoss heads back to the service line. Received by Thompson, set by Mamatas to Bologna. Great dig there by Selker, but a diving Schreckengoss can't keep the play alive. Good hustle, though, by Leah Schreckengoss and a great dig to, by Selker to kind of give him a chance to keep that rally going. Yeah, but again, Plum looking like a much different team than the one that started this set. Again, let's see what that means going forward. Nice dig there that goes against the net, but it's miss hit to the near sideline, and that will do it for set number one. A dominating showing here for Freeport after going up nine to nothing to start the match. They just kind of coasted to a first set victory. Yeah, Jake, and uh, while we have an opportunity, I'd like to thank one of our wonderful sponsors again, making this PIAA Class 3A first round matchup possible here on High Top Sports Network, and that, of course, is Douglas Insurance. Douglas Insurance Services located in Sarver, right next to the Freeport High School, where we currently are. Actually, we're at the middle school, but uh, not too far from here either. It is an independent insurance agency, which means they have made available some of their best companies for your online quick quotes. Douglas Insurance Services offers personal insurance coverages to their clients in Pennsylvania, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto insurance, condo insurance, and flood insurance, just to name a few. So make sure you give the fine folks at Douglas Insurance a call today at 1-800-722-9990. Douglas Insurance Services, a proud sponsor of Freeport Athletics. Yeah, hey, and while you're at it, you know, if you talk to Marie down at Douglas, tell them High Top sent you. Yeah. Marie, just a great, great person, a great supporter of local athletics here in the Freeport area. I couldn't agree more, Jake. Uh, sometimes I feel like we're uh, finishing each other's sandwiches over here. Well, I we mean, did we did grab a bite to eat before we came out here, but there were no sharing of sandwiches. We shared our thoughts maybe on the sandwiches, but uh, I mean, yeah, yes. Just we, it's like a, we we spend enough time together, and we're in gyms and and and, and fields enough together where it's like we literally are thinking the same thing getting to be a little strange starting to wonder if we were separated at birth <laughs> just like five years apart the uh what do I they am, call those non-identical uh that have a five-year age difference right like is super there fraternal that, is there a word for that <laughs> whatever the case we we do finish each other's sentences and sometimes sandwiches every now and again yes but again, uh, while well, we have a chance, why not thank uh, another one of our good friends, uh, Steffi's Country Catering, I my love, good friend I Terry. I love Terry. Love Terry, and if you want, make sure you follow his Facebook page just to see all the delectable items he has. But uh, he's got over 40 years of experience. Steffi's Country Catering provides sumptuous home-cooked food served by a friendly professional staff to make your next event worry-free. Ask about their grazing tables and three-tier cheese ball cakes. Be sure to order some homemade cheese balls or try their extra fresh meat and cheese or pickle and olive plates. Sugar Rush Cupcakes by Tara are available by order, and be sure to check out their Facebook page for weekly Sunday takeout specials. Whether it's for a Friday night football tailgate, a family event, or just a fantastic meal, Steffi's Country Catering has food the whole family will love. Mention High Top Sports Network and receive a special 10% discount when you book your next event. Again, thank you for having me, Jake. I couldn't imagine it any other way, Joe. So I got the invite. I couldn't turn it down. Starting off the second set, it's Shrek and Goss for Freeport from the service line. A nice diving received there by Julia Chapkis. Set by Shrek and Goss looking for Selker. Quick set by Glatz to Bologna. And Bologna unloading on that ball and keeps it in before it goes out of the... Uh, Back boundary, good accuracy there by Emily Bologna. Yeah, and again, this is a little bit of a carryover from what we saw in the, the uh, latter portion of that first set. Plum looking a lot more crisp than the uh, team that fell behind nine to zip early on. Quick set there by Dell, looking for Sel uh, Russo, excuse me. Bologna trying to get another oh, point there. Dave! Great job by Soilus and Dell to keep that rally going. Amatas gets it to Susco and diving, but unable to make the play there with Cassidy Dell. But once again, we see Danica Susco right in the middle of that play. That was a little Susco-Russo matchup there at the net. 
just kind of mono a mono and Sesco getting the better of that particular uh, matchup. Oh, I think that one might have been traveling, but Lampus plays it, and then it's hit across there by Russo. And if it was going to go out of bounds, it wouldn't have mattered because Josie Russo gets the kill for Freeport. Brings it back to within a one-point game here early on in the second set. Yeah, Jake, it looks like that one probably was going to be heading for uh, out of bounds, uh, if not touched by Plum's libero there. I believe number six, that of course, is Maya Noonenberg. So Plum right back with the ball here. It's going to be Emily Bologna, the junior outside hitter and right side hitter. Bologna serve across, received by Soilus. Little miscommunication there, but a diving ball like able to get it across to the other side. And then that is pushed along by Carolyn Hunter. Set by Dell, hit across by Lampus. Diving play there by Nonenberg. And then just pushed across for the point by Grace Thompson. A super heads up play there by Thompson. Saw that there was a lot of net front presence and just kind of pushed it right there in the middle of that defense. Uh, the high IQ play, as I like to call them. Bologna with the serve, and the Jackets trying to play that one. I don't know if it deflected off of somebody or it did. It looked like it just uh, barely grazed Selker on the uh, on the return. Bologna with another serve. Soilus there to receive. Set by Dell. Looking for Russo, and Russo finds that far corner for a point. Uh, is that Russo or Dell? Uh, 24, that is Josie oh, Russo. Okay, I thought that was Dell on the far side. Again, I didn't, there's not much room there to, to sneak that one in and uh, able to do so. Speaking of Selker, she's at the service line. That one received by Thompson. Set by Mamatas and hit over by Bologna. Dell getting it there to... Elena Whitlinger, first time calling her name in this game here tonight, and the first time we're calling her name, she gets a kill. Yeah, no surprise. Another uh, piece of that Freeport depth that is just so hard to defend. You never know when somebody will just come in and surprise you. And Whitlinger, the case on that last point. Service error by Selker. Well, give Plum the ball back. They lead it by three. And it'll be Danica Susco serving that one. Soilus with the receipt. Set by Dell and Whitlinger once again. Ooh. This time she pinpoints that near side corner for the point. Wow, that was awfully close. And uh, the harder it hit, uh, harder it is hit, Jake. Uh, probably more difficult for the uh, referees to be able to kind of zone in on. That one was awfully close and opposite of where the line judge was. But uh, they stay in, and report will have a serve as a result. That's Grace Beach from the service line received by Emily Bologna. And I think they're going to get a double hit indeed is called on Marissa Mamatas. Plum with some early momentum but a nice pushback from the Yellow Jackets here now, Jake. Beach is served, just skins the top of the tape as they like to call it. Falls over for an ace. And Freeport, one point down five. Storming back here to a two-point deficit. Received there by Susco, quickly pushed across by Mamatas. Returning it back over to the other side is Lampus. And Mamatas going to get called on another double hit. Yeah, that's a, a tough one there. A couple, uh, couple errors. I think if we're counting up the errors, Plum leading considerably in that category, and that's a category you can ill afford to lead in uh, when playing these Yellow Jackets. Glatz making a run up to keep that ball alive. Nice job by Glatz. And it's Lampus blocked in front and tipped down. Trying to see who that was there for Plum. And it is going to be Carolyn Hunter dunking that one down. Yeah, nice effort. Again, they have some athletic players at the net do the Mustangs. And another great case of it there. Samantha Glatz is served, received by Whitlinger. Set by Dell looking back at Whitlinger. But now they're going to get Cassidy Dell with a double hit. Watching the scoreboard, it's not, not matching up with what I thought I had. Again, I'm not a numbers guy, and it's only as simple as adding one every time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. Well, 
According to the in-house scoreboard here, we're tied eight to eight, and that's what that's what uh, you know whether or not that's uh, that's what we're going with. Yeah, I uh, again math not my strong point. <laughs> not gonna sit here and pretend like it is. Lampus with the serve, Susco receives, Glatz with the set, looking for Hunter, and oh, oh what man. effort by Selker, but what effort by Selker and uh, Lampus, Lampus with the first attempt and. Selker with another punch at it. Man, oh, man, these these uh, Yellow Jackets, the hustle, we've seen it all season long. Every point, it's like it's a match point for them. Yeah, that ball was going towards Freeport's bench area, and, you know, some, some of the players kind of backed off a little bit, but Selker ready to dive <laughs> into the seats. And a nice push that time. I believe that was Whitlinger, and indeed it was. Yeah, nice play again by Whitlinger, a player that, uh, again, you, you don't say her name as much as a Lampus or Adele, or Selker, or Russo, but uh, again, that kind of depth that just makes this team seem almost unstoppable. And as a freshman, her future looks very bright with this Yellow Jackets team, Joe. Yeah, most certainly. And Bologna couldn't run up on that one in time as that's hit into the net. And Freeport with their first lead, if I'm not mistaken, here in the second set. Bollock with the serve. And Glatz just with the quick push. Smart play by Glatz. That's the kind of plays uh, you're going to need if you're plumb, if you're going to stay competitive in this one. Just, again, one of those high IQ plays. It's keeping the defense on their toes. You know, a lot, everybody's expecting that ball to come on three. But uh, whenever you can mix in that quick second hit, get it over the net whenever the defense is sleeping, that's going to bode well for you. Glass to Bologna, and that one pinned between the front wall and down on the Freeport side of the court. So the Mustangs back up on top, 11 to 10. And yeah, Jake, just to confirm, I apologize real quickly. Armstrong did take set number three. They lead two sets to one over Conneaut in that uh, class 3A PIAA matchup. And hit a little too hard there by Emily Bologna out of bounds, tying it back up at 11 to 11. But Armstrong in the driver's seat, Joe. Yeah. In their respective game here, also on High Top Sports Network. Yep. If you uh, get bored with Jake and I, you can flip over to that one. It's a little bit ahead of us. Uh, I don't know why anybody would. Or hopefully those folks, when they're done watching that, will flip on over to us since that one started at six. Indeed. And good discipline there by the uh, by the Freeport Yellow Jackets and uh, Leah Schreckengost. Yeah, Bologna with that little push and uh, hard one to lay off of. And a service error there for Freeport as Ava Soilis comes back out onto the court for Leah Schreckengost. That sends Grace Thompson back to serve here for Plum. Received there by Lampus. Bumped up by Dell, back to Lampus. She'll hit it from the back row. Good dig there by Thompson. And Bologna going in for the kill. Dug out there by Lampus and quickly pushed across there by Selker. Set by Glatz, looking for Bologna. Blocked in front by Russo and company. Bologna once again going for it. Diving dig there by Volick. Selker with the free ball. Glatz with the set. That time looking oh, for Susco and another beautiful dig. The defense by Freeport right now, just unbelievable. And Dell just rising up for that one. Free oh. ball played over once again, that time the defense by Chapkis. By both clubs. And Russo, the attack just continuing and continuing Freeport with chance after chance. You hate that somebody had to lose that point, Jake. Just great defense on both sides. A, a diving attempt by Volick in the back end, and then Grace, uh, Grace Soilis, excuse me, Ava Soilis. I'm sure siblings hate when you call them their, their, wrong, their, their sibling's name. But a great job by Ava Soilis, just kind of throwing a fist at it to keep it going and a nice defensive play on the plum side as well. So you hate to see it, but somebody had to lose that point. Unfortunately, it was the Mustangs in that instance. Well, that's going to bump this up to Bologna. That one will be going to plum. They're going to say that a Freeport player touched it in front of the net there before it went out of bounds on the Mustang side. Kind of looked like it made contact with the net, but a Freeport player got their fingers in there. 
So Plum awarded the point. We're all tied up at 13. Colonia with the serve. Great serve. Good receive there by Soilis and hit across by Lampus. Blatt sets up Hunter, and that one will be out of bounds. And again, this is kind of what you were wondering if uh, you were going to see here in set number two. Plum getting off to that slow start, falling behind 9 to nothing in set number one, and then kind of coming back and making things a lot more competitive thereafter. Now, fresh slate here, a fresh score to start set number two, and seeing a much more competitive match now. That ball kind of came in like a slider. It looked like it was coming in outside of that near boundary, but scooted itself in to the uh, near side corner for a point. It's amazing what you can do with a volleyball. You, we, we see it a lot of times on serves, just the different ways the ball can be shaped. And right there, a case of it on the kill attempt. Dug out by Thompson. Bumped by Hunter and a free ball sent over by Bologna. Dell's going to set up Russo. He blocked in front. Dell right there to bump it back up to Russo. Flats across the court looking for Hunter and diving for it with Selker, but it'll deflect off of her and go back beyond the boundary for another point here for Plum. And like you said, Joe, they're playing like they finally got it together. Well, and defense is front and center right now, Jake. That's the one thing that I think is 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 noticeable and noteworthy uh, right now for both teams. Just excellent diving attempts right there. Susco with a diving attempt, unable to come up with it. Yeah, and a great job there by Josie Russo to high point that ball. Uh, she hit that ball higher than any of the front row for Plum, uh, you know, the net front presence for Plum, higher than their outreached hands. And whenever you have that, that's a heck of a luxury for a team. Serve received by Bologna. Tipped across by Hunter, and she just locates that weak spot and attacks. Yeah, Plum uh, not going away. This is when you wonder if a team like Freeport's going to use that kind of pedigree and put the foot on the gas. But uh, Plum, the team right now that looks a little more geared on making this a competitive PIAA matchup, Jake. Absolutely, as Glatt sends that one off. It's mishit by Whitlinger. And now a two-point Mustangs lead after the ace by Samantha Glatt. Yeah, Glatt's an excellent setter. Uh, I believe she was a, the uh, High Top Sports Network slash We Serve First uh, player of the game when we had Plum uh, on our broadcast earlier in the season. Having a good setter is so important, and Glatt's certainly one of those. Lampus with the kill. Susco diving to try to keep that play alive. But Freeport. Back at the service line, it's Erica Lampus. Her yellow jacket try and tie this one back up in set number two. Glatz with the set, looking for Thompson. That one deflecting off the fingertips of Whitlinger. And that'll be another Mustang point. And Plum just looking like the more uh, hungry team here in this second set, especially as we're getting in the latter portion of it. You can tell they, they felt like their backs are up against the wall and they are when you fall behind one set, but looking very competent here, Jake. Absolutely, as that one dug out by Selker and then hit across by Lampus. Glatz receives it on the other end, tries to set it up, but nobody home in the middle of the court there. One of those rare uh, mistakes for Plum. They had a lot of them in the first set. That's why you saw the, uh, the, the result that you did there. Uh, but they've been pretty mistake-free here in set number two, Jake. But right there, one of the rare ones thus far for the Mustangs. Bumped up by Bologna and hit across by Chapkis. Set by Beach, looking for Dell. And dude, you're getting a Dell. That's a kill. <laughs> That's a good one, I like that. I don't believe we have a Dell though. No, we don't have any Dells. Oh, no we do. It's just not on us. No, not on us, but we have Dells at home, don't we? Yeah. The high top, okay, so we, we do have Dells. It's I think cool. they're Dells. It's going to be the official sponsor of our Dell computers, Cassidy <laughs> Dell. Set by Glatz, looking for Thompson. I was going to say, we give her as a player of the game. That's an expensive player of the game award. Very much so. Glatz getting it to Susco. Dug out there by Lampus. Set by Beach, looking back at Lampus. Nice dig there on the other end by Chapkis. And Bologna rockets that one. Bollock able to stop the ball in its tracks, and it gets its way over to Lampus. Oh, Glatz, want to play! Oh, man, and what a kill! 
Yeah, Glatt's keeping that one off the net, and then uh, I'm not sure the number was Maria that? Hunter. Yeah, coming in there and making sure that one was put to bed. What an excellent job with the save and then the finish for the Mustangs. Now it's Maya Nonenberg with the serve. Received by Volick. Bump set there by Dell to Lampus and just dunked down by Danica Susco. Denial at the front of the net from that middle blocker position. Yeah, what an excellent block all by herself and a little smirk as she went back to celebrate with her teammates. Put her team up by two. Dell bumping that one to Selker. She hits it to the back row. It's dug out by Nonenberg. Glass to Bologna. Near collision there on the side of Freeport, but they avoid it. Selker with a nice hit there, able to change uh, sides of the court. Thompson dug out there by Volick. And just barely tapped across that time by Autumn English. Yeah, English, another one of those players up front that uh, might not get uh, as much pub as some other, but a great play there. Again, another high IQ play of just pushing that over the wall, knowing that no one was set up to defend it after. Now service specialist, freshman Leah Schreckengoss back out there for the Jackets. Lats with the set, looking for Susco. That one skins off the top of the tape and falls down onto Freeport. Onto the Freeport side of the court. Selker diving for it, but just unable to get it. And now you can start to see Danica Susco really start to take over. And yeah, getting her groove back. Almost like Stella. Yes. We actually brought that up today. I don't know what the context <laughs> was. It's clearly someone finding their groove once again. Absolutely. Lampus sending that one across. Glatz with the quick little push across. Oh, great diving dig there by Nonenberg. Glatz with the slap to get it onto the other side. Dell to Selker. That one deflecting off the hands of a player for Plum. Chapkis diving for that one, but unable to play it back to her side. And Freeport never letting Plum get too far ahead. Yeah, Jake, and, and I was saying how important this set is for Plum after that lackluster start in the first set to be able to win this one. And nice kill there by Susco, unable to come up with it was uh, it's soilless. But it's so important for Plum, I think, to win this one because you kind of been the more competitive team, maybe the, the better team overall, I think, in this set. And if Freeport could somehow find a way to win that, that would be pretty much a, a pretty big gut punch uh, for Plum. So they, I think they have to make sure to win this set if they want to have any or want any chance of uh, winning this contest. Well, the Mustangs in the driver's seat here is now they're just two points away from tying this up at one set apiece. And Coach Phillips and the Freeport Yellow Jackets will take a timeout. And Joe, while we have a timeout, I think uh, I think we've got to thank some of the fine folks that put us in these seats here today. And that one of those is, of course, tonight's player of the match sponsor, the wonderful, wonderful people at the We Serve First Foundation. We Serve First Foundation is committed to supporting the love of volleyball in Western Pennsylvania and has spent the past six years providing financial assistance to families in need which have a player or players who are interested in participating in club volleyball. The We Serve First uh, Foundation was created by the late Ellen Toy and her husband Tim with the goal of providing an opportunity for any interested players to enhance their volleyball experience. Through their incredibly popular Jam the Gym and Pack the Park events, the We Serve First Foundation has raised funds for a variety of local charities, and they are proud to be tonight's player of the match sponsor. Tim Toy, a just genius in terms of volleyball knowledge. Uh, he's been on our broadcast a couple times, and hopefully we'll have him back on here before these state playoffs are over. Uh, but we want to thank Tim and the rest of the fine people at the We Serve First Foundation for providing uh, support for local volleyball players and families. Absolutely, Tim Toy, a big fan of Tim and all the work he does with the community and uh, his volleyball knowledge, a really great guy. Happy to have partnered with him for a few things here this fall. Most certainly. And a big point there for Freeport, Joe. Again, if you're if you're Plum, you can't let this one get away from you. It is just paramount, I think, that they uh, find a way to win this set, uh, Jake. Susco with the kill, nice Dig by Dell. Lampus hitting it to the back row. Thompson there. Now Hunter hits it across. Dell with another dig. Keeping it alive there was Whitlinger and hit from the back row. A free ball by Selker. Susco just tapping that one over. Soilus bumps that over to uh, Lampus. Hunter gets that one out of bounds. And Freeport 
down just one. You know what? We might get some free volleyball here in the second set, Joe, as Plum takes a timeout. Yeah, and I like that timeout there. You almost feel like Freeport's starting to seize a little bit of that momentum, and you put a stop to it, even though you're still in, in, in the lead, 23-22. Excuse me. Um, I think that's a great timeout for the Mustangs. Big, yeah. um, that was a coach's point, too. You know, Freeport out of the timeout, getting two in a row. I um, also want to thank our friends at uh, Sprankles Neighborhood Market, especially the Saxonburg location on this particular evening, and although we love all three of them, um, Sprankles Neighborhood Market, located at 270 West Water Street in Saxonburg, has been making quality meat and family tradition since 1999. Sprankles takes pride in delivering the best prices around while providing fantastic overall value for their customers by offering the widest range of items, the highest quality of freshness, the cleanest, most organized shopping environment, and the friendliest associates anywhere. Be sure to like and share when you visit Sprankle's Facebook page to hashtag Save on Meat. Well said. Selker with another serve miss hit there by Thompson, but able to keep, be kept alive by Bologna and a free ball sent over by Glatz. Dell with the set to Russo, hit to the back row, Nonnenberg there, Glatz diving to the floor to, floor to keep it alive, then it's hit over by Thompson. Glatz up. just doing it today, diving lane out just like Silker on the other end. Love the hustle. And a brutal hit there by Caroline Hunter. That one ties us all up at 23, but this is just kind of the Yellow Jackets effect. Yeah, they, they down but never out, Jake. Absolutely. Selker with the serve. Thompson there, Glatz with the serve back, looking for Susco, but, you know, maybe just not set high enough for her. She really had to come crashing in for that one. Yeah, and, and again, I, I'm going to repeat this. It is so important that Plum find a way to squeak this one out. For much of this set, they look like the better team. Uh, they look like the team that was cruising for a victory in this set. Uh, but you got to remember who your opponent is. And it just so happens to be a team that is now the Whippeal champions. Um, a team that's won six Whippeal championships in the last 10 years, 11 years, whatever it's been. A team that's won, what, 17 consecutive section titles. Uh -huh. uh, you got to remember your opponent. They're never going to let you uh, walk away with a win easy. So, um, you know, considering how that first set went, it is so important, I think, for Plum to try to squeak out a victory here in set number two, knock things up, and see how things go thereafter. You fall behind 2-0 here especially after seeming like you were the more dominant team in this set. I don't think that bodes well for your long-term prospects. Well, we won't have long to find out the outcome of this set as Selker sends that one across. Quick set by Glatz to Susco. Nice dig there by Selker. Way to keep it alive by Dell and then hit across by Lampus. Thompson to Glatz. Looking for Hunter. That one deflecting off the fingertips of a Freeport Yellow Jacket down onto the Freeport side of the court. We're all tied up. At 24 apiece. Now we got to go to 26. So gonna my say. prediction of maybe some free volleyball has come true. Uh, everybody loves free volleyball. We had to pay to broadcast this, so we might as well get some free volleyball, Jacob. That's right. Everybody at home, everybody listening, it's always free for you on High you Top get, Sports you, Network. Right. But now you get even more free stuff. There's never enough free, you know? You can never have too much free. Never. Dell it sets that up to Lampus. I got by Susco. Glass has that one blocked back at her. <laughs> oh, wow! Ping pong. Or pinball, rather. Oh, and that one hit into the net. Freeport with the advantage here. Now one point away. Wow. And I'm telling you, that <laughs> dig off that kill attempt from Russo was a thing of uh, just a masterpiece. I'm thinking about that just uh, that pinball maneuver there by Plum. I, I'm couldn't even count the number of hits. I thought it might have been four hits for a moment, but uh, not the case. But Susco just kind of throwing a fist at it after two deflections uh, and able to get it back across. But, man, oh, man, just the defense here and the hustle by both teams just hard to uh, not recognize. It's going to be tapped across by Thompson, set by Dell, looking for Lampus. She's going to push it back row. Susco there to dig it out. Bumped up. Hunter going to push it. Hit over by Dell. Glatz with the set. Looking for Bologna. And blocked back. And the second set will go to Autumn English and the Freeport Yellow Jackets. And that's just what I said there, Jake. Plum so close to getting the win there in set number two. Um, and you just got to wonder, what's that do for the morale? 
seemed like their their confidence was uh, at an all-time high in this match and then Freeport able to uh, come back and steal that one you gotta wonder how Plum's gonna recover here in set number three now in all my time of covering volleyball uh, I have seen a handful of teams come back from a 2-0 deficit uh, including this year it, in, at Freeport here whenever they played Hampton the second time uh, Hampton went up 2-0 Armstrong or Freeport rather stormed back three straight sets to win that one uh, I know that either you or Josh covered a match that was similar to that where uh, I believe actually Armstrong went up two sets and then Hampton won the next three so we've seen that just because you go up two sets doesn't mean you're out of it yeah i just think it's a very tall task when you're speaking about who plum's opponent is here tonight especially when that opponent is playing on their home court um these freeport yellow jackets who just basically stole that second set there even though i think for much of that second set plum was the more um impressive looking team uh defensively at the net passing getting it to their hitters uh, but uh, it's not about how you start it's how you finish and freeport able to sneak in the victory there Speaking of sneaking in victories, uh, official from Conneaut, the Armstrong Riverhawks winning three sets to one over the Eagles tonight. So they will advance to the quarterfinal round to play either Hampton or Dubois area. That Hampton Dubois area game also going on tonight at Dubois area high school at 630. So uh, we should have hopefully have a final in that one here soon. Uh, and know who the Riverhawks will face in their quarterfinal matchup. As for uh, these Mustangs and Yellow Jackets, they'll face the winner of either Holidaysburg or Twin Valley. Uh, that also was a 6 o'clock start time in Holidaysburg tonight, so maybe we'll be able to get you the information on these quarterfinal matchups uh, upcoming. But we do know that the Riverhawks of Armstrong will play in the quarterfinals after a 3-1 to one victory over Conneaut here tonight on High Top Sports Network. And looking forward to this third set here. Trying to see if I can't find anything about the Dubois and Hampton game here. Not really seeing much of an update here. So, oh, actually, uh, the Talbots. Make quick work of Dubois, so 3-0. It'll be uh, Dubois and uh, or, or Hampton and Armstrong in a little uh, Section 5 3A rematch here. Yeah, saw each other twice during the regular season. That apparently not enough. They'll have to play in the state playoffs now. A couple teams that these Yellow Jackets know quite well. Polonia has that one dug out by Lampus. Quick set by Dell. Bologna once again with the hit across. Lampus receives that. And Dell with the quick how do you do. Lats to Thompson. Dug out there by Lampus. She gets it to Dell. And Dell able to spot that near side corner. Nobody home. And Freeport will get us rolling here in set number three with the first point. Par for the course when it comes to Cassidy Dell. Just so smart. Eyes down court. Saw that opening and just struck and put it right where no one was. What a great play. Leah Schreckengoss with the serve. Glatz with the set, and Susco into the net there. So Freeport with a 2-0 lead here to start set number three. Yeah, again, it's uh, going to be interesting to see how Plum handles uh, that, that adversity that came from the second set, leading late and losing that lead and falling eventually. How do they handle it? How do they bounce back? Cool. Oh. And persistence pays there for Danica Susco. Sent one over, it got bumped up and sent back. Sent another one over, and then another one, and yeah. finally got the uh, got the kill. That's not a good place you want to leave uh, Susco wide open uh, with no one on the defensive side of things because uh, 99 times out of 100, she's going gonna to get the kill. Thompson serve, received by the Jackets. Russo going for the kill attempt there, but Susco able to get it back across. Glass to Susco, blocked in front by Russo. Thompson sends that one back towards the official on the ladder there, and it'll fall down to the court for another Jackets point. Yeah, Plum looking to 
go down swinging here, falling, falling behind two sets to none. A monumental task to try to come back and win this one, especially here in the state playoffs. But uh, going down swinging, that's the thing we want to see from these Mustangs. Not going to go away quietly here, hopefully, set number three. Oh, the hitting error gives Freeport the serve here. Cassidy Dell swings at it and will pick up the service error. So Plum trails by two. One of the few mistakes here by Freeport. Certainly one of the few mistakes by Cassidy Dell, someone who has been rather uh, effective and efficient here tonight. Bologna has that serve received there by Soilis, and I think they're going to get a lift. Yep, lift indeed. So the lift goes against Freeport. Right call there. Once again, Emily Bologna will serve. Received by Selker. Running across to set that one up is Dell. Blocked right back at her. And uh, the block by Susco results in a plum point. I'll tell you what, Susco is an impressive player. This is my first opportunity to watch her this season. But just her hustle getting back after striking the ball and then getting immediately back in a defensive position. She is uh, her hustle through the roof. And that serve too far on the far boundary. Goes out of play, and Freeport will take over. But, yeah, Joe, to add on to uh, your compliments to Susco, I mean, she is unbelievable. First teamer, very well deserved. Yeah, I can certainly see why. Another yeah. case of it right there. Yep, right there. She shows off the example again. And, again, you just watch how quickly that she'll, uh, when a rally is going on, how quickly she can get back to a defensive position after a kill attempt, just like you saw there. It's uh, mighty impressive. A lot of like uh, when coaches say you follow your shot in basketball a lot of people just want to watch that shot and not necessarily crash the boards but uh, very similar example there when it comes to her defensive prowess after striking the ball speaking of striking the ball Lampus answers with a kill of her own there puts Freeport back out in front here by a point and that sends freshman Grace Beach Back to the service line here for Freeport. Received by Bologna. Popped up by Glatz. And Susco gets that deflecting oh. off the front row and a great diving dig there by Selker. Not the first time we've seen that tonight from Selker. Absolutely not. Probably won't be the last either. I would assume not. Susco keeps that alive. Glatz just tipping it across the net. Selker going to bump that one up. Looking for Lampus. Nice dig there by Bologna. Uh. Miscommunication right there, stinging the Mustangs. I didn't do that intentionally. I see what I was going to say. I see I what actually you did there. I, didn't mean, I was just looking for an adjective or a <laughs> synonym rather to, than any words I've used here tonight. Uh, coincidentally, that the... It may be a subconscious we weapon decision. Of, weapon of choice by a yellow jacket. <laughs> One would assume. Never, never met a yellow jacket. Yeah, I don't know what other tools they have at their disposal you know, in the animal kingdom. Flying. Evasion and stinging. Yep. <laughs> so Plum gets the point there, and they cut the lead back to, uh, well, they cut the deficit to one as their setter, junior, Samantha Glatz. Another person who's just been just hustling all over the court here tonight. Some diving plays by their setter, Glatz. Oh, yeah, that's what you, you expect all your players to really just go all out here at this level. It's win or go home here in the state playoffs. A great kill there by the Jackets. And I'm not sure if Susco started on the back row defensively, or really back row as this game, uh, early on in this game. I thought she was more front row, but I'm, I think they have her back there for her uh, digging abilities and her defensive prowess. Certainly one of the more effective players at the net, but uh, just as important on those serve receives in the back row for the Mustangs. And Bologna hits that across. Beach with the set. Gets it to like right there. Whitlinger dunked down there by Cassidy Dell. But uh, yeah, Joe, to kind of add on to what you were saying about Susco, uh, she's a player that goes the whole way around the rotation. No need to sub her out. So, you know, her native position, that middle blocker, really on that front row, but she excels most at that middle blocker position. Uh, but you have no need to take her out because she can play every role. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen her come up with a couple huge digs in the back row. 
so far here tonight. Right there's another. Hey, there's a, exactly great dig there. And, you know, as great as that dig was, it still results in a Yellow Jackets point as Freeport storms ahead by two and forces a Plum Mustangs timeout. And there's nothing more during a timeout that I love than quite hearing about our wonderful sponsors that help keep the lights on here, Joe. Yes, and uh, one of which I'm just going to let the uh, commercial do the talking for us. So take it away, our fine friends at TGIF Solutions. Protecting the things you love and how you do so is among the most important decisions you'll ever have to make. TGIF Solutions can provide you with the peace of mind by supplying answers to all of your insurance needs, whether it be home, auto, business, life, or farm coverage. Contact the team at the Shellhammer Atwood Agency today in West Catanning to be sure that you, your loved ones, and the things that matter most stay safe when it matters the most. TGIF Solutions, insurance for what matters. And welcome back, everybody, to High Top Sports Network for this PIAA Class 3A girls volleyball first round matchup between the Plum Mustangs and Freeport Yellow Jackets. I'm Jake DeLuca, Joe Rhodes. To my right here. Howdy. Great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Wouldn't have anybody else. Wouldn't have it any other way. Set by Glatz. Pushed across by Hunter. Diving for it there was Lampus, but it'll go outside of the post. And a coach's point. Coach's point indeed. We've seen a uh, number of those here tonight. No surprise whenever you get into the state playoffs. Yep. If you're plum, Jake, you got to get going now. you got to make a move. you got to kind of get back that dominance you saw in large spurts in that second set. Be the aggressor. Great dig there oh. by Freeport to keep that, that one lift. alive. Awfully close. Indeed it was. Beach with the set. Looking for Whitlinger. That one will... Bounce off the pole. They'll call it four hits. So there you go. Plum with two straight points coming out of that timeout. Again, they need to be the aggressor here. Take the game to the Yellow Jackets. Nowhere to go down two sets to none. Oh, and that one. You know, you could see Lampus trying to get out of the way. Had to kind of dance around Selker there. That ball looked like it was going to go out of bounds on the serve. But instead, it will uh, be a point here for Plum. I haven't seen that where you're trying to get out of the way and the ball just seems to follow you. And that's exactly <laughs> what happened there with Lampus. Yeah, I got to say, that's the first time I've ever seen that as well, Joe. Glatz with the set to Thompson. Able to get a finger on it there and keep it alive was Helgren. Yeah, nice job by Helgren. She caught that almost on her way back down after jumping. Tipped over by Dell. Glatz with oh, a tough Glatz. shot to hit. That one was a tough angle to try to get it back over. Again, Glatz just all out hustle all night long and you know your setter is a lot of times a leader on your team and what better way to lead than just leaving it all out there like Glatz has all night impressive stuff from their setter absolutely Bollock sends that across Glatz with the set goes across and that one pushed over by Bologna Thompson to Glatz she'll set it back to Thompson Lampus and that one jousted in front, and yep. they will award it to Plum. Double hit. And again, Plum looking very, uh, a little more motivated coming out of that timeout. Now down by just one, Jake. I believe it's been a 3-1 three three uh, run here for the Mustangs out of that timeout. You're asking the guy who spoke all broadcast long about not being a math guy. Oh, that one missed hit. And Good effort there by Maya Nonnenberg to chase after that one to the back wall, but unable to get it back into play as Freeport will get the serve back, and that will send Leah Schreckengoss back to serve. Received by Nonnenberg, set by Glatz, looking for Thompson, blocked in front, kept alive by the Mustangs, Glatz. Gets it to Susco. Nice dig there by Lampus. Susco gets it right back, and Leah Schreckengoss with the quick free ball over. And you give her chance after chance. Susco will make you pay. She did right there. Yeah, just uh, catching that ball at its peak, and she had a Russo on the other side of the net. It was not a short player herself. Uh, right in her grill and able to somehow get that one up over top of Russo for the point. Excellent athleticism there by Susco. 
Thompson serve, received by Lampus. Dell with the set to Russo. They're going to get her with a double hit there. You yep. can hear it. Just like that, tied right back up, Jake. I said if it's a, there's a time to go, it's now for these Mustangs. 12 all. Thompson serve, received by Soilis. Nice diving received there by Soilis. Joust in front. Freeport able to keep it alive. Russo mistiming the jump there, maybe jumping. Fraction of a second too soon there. She went up for the kill. And here you go, Plum with the lead. After that timeout, really kind of swayed things, and it's like, can they keep that foot on the throttle here, or will Freeport, I'm going to say in the net there by Freeport, well, they will converse, and that will indeed be the call. That is the right call, I do believe, as much as they're going to plead. Yeah, Lampus, one of the leaders on this team, pleading her case for her team. Whatever the case here, Jake, uh, if you're plum, can they keep that foot on the throttle like I just asked, or will Freeport show that championship might and that that, uh, that attitude that we've been here. We know uh, the stakes and how big these are. We will find out here over the next few minutes. Time will tell as Susco sends that across. Russo returns the attack. And what will the call be? Oh. Initially, the call is out. That will be the call. Just barely out of bounds on that far side. Right idea, though. No one was home and just a little too much mustard on the ball there jake absolutely Susco. what a mess that would actually be if you had mustard on a ball that would stink i feel like it would be a court hazard after a while <laughs> yes oh what a block in front i think that was selker it that was. got a hand on it but russo right there as well yeah and selker just again the do-it-all kind of player you can play every position like we kind of spoke of susco earlier selker very much of that same kind of guild Dell serve received by a pair of Mustangs there. Thompson gets it over. Volick diving dig. Dell going to bump that one up to Lampus. And that one, I think they're going to, yep. Oh, oh a yeah. double hit. Hmm. Get anything with numbers, I'm going to get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if it's something that it should be the eye test there, Jake. I don't think a lift has any numbers in it. Well, no, it's a double hit. Oh, you oh, see no, two okay. fingers. I'm like, that's why I got it wrong, because there's numbers involved. You're right. <laughs> Oh, I got my scores all messed up here. Three four up, 16. Yeah, 14. they scored 15 on that last one, and this last point going in favor of the Yellow Jackets. So, again, what? If plum, uh, plum. It's now or never, Jake. Can they do it, or Freeport going to show why they are? Oh, now we're showing 15 14. Okay, Freeport. see, yeah, I'm just. Who knows? Oh, my goodness. What a rocket there by Josie Russo. Just kind of. Watched it as it came off the receipt of the uh, Mustangs and just walloped that one back row. Yeah, just uh, we always talk about the different sound coming off of a kill, and right there was one of those instances. It sounded like a like a uh, like a cannon going off, Jake. An underwater torpedo. <laughs> yeah, one of those. I've never heard that analogy. That's new. But you I... know what isn't new? The wonderful support of our sponsors, and we love them so much. One of which is our good friend Doug at Sprankles in Saxonburg. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors you can see there. Uh, and that cartoon cut of meat, it looks pretty good, but the real meat in that place is no unbelievable. No comparison to cartoon There's, meat. What is the, no comparison to cartoon meat, but what is that, uh, the meat, uh, I'm, the name's escaping me, you that was there for the commercial, the um, vault. Yes, the, 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 the dry-aged meat vault. So there's literally a dry-aged meat vault in this place that you guys cannot miss. If you've never been to the Sprankles in Saxonburg, please do. They have a dry-aged meat case of just aged meats of different types. It is phenomenal. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know why that's the case. I'm usually eating concession stand food because we are always in gyms these days, Jake. That's right. I, I have never met a hot dog that didn't agree with me. But the moral of that is uh, Sprinkles Neighborhood Market. Hashtag save on meat. Make sure you check them out. This rally off to a hot start here. Bologna gets it across. Soilus receives it. Dell sets up Russo and Russo with back-to-back -back kills now. She's a fun player to watch. And, you know, this team, they have their leader, uh, their, their veteran leadership and players like Lampus, uh, Junior Ava Soilis, but just a lot of young underclassmen on this team that have really come into their own as the season has progressed. Yeah, certainly. And it's just a, 
a wealth of goods as we keep seeing that uh, there are players sitting on their bench right now that I think a lot of teams in the state bracket would be more than happy to have on their roster. No doubt about that. Glatz to Thompson. Nice dig by Dell. Bump set by Soilis to Lampus and just a little too much on that kill by Lampus as the Plum Mustangs will get possession of the serve here. And to my point, you know, if you're Plum, you get the serve back, you're down by three, little margin for error, you've got to go now. You've got to go now, or this one will be over before you blink. And that's a tough ball to hit there for Lampus as she goes crashing into the uh, post here on the near side. Silker didn't catch that one necessarily as clean as I think she would have liked, and that led to Lampus uh, almost colliding with the this near side post of the net. Dell with the set, looking at Lampus. She tries to hit it opposite side, but that one's going to go too far towards the far side boundary, out of bounds. And Plum now coming back here, trimming that deficit to a single point here with Emily Bologna at the service line. A great last name. It is. And another kill. Yeah, this has been the Josie Russo show here over the last few points for Freeport. I want to say she's gathered in three consecutive points for the Yellow Jackets, not in concession themselves, but the last three points that the Yellow Jackets have gotten have all come off of the hand of Josie Russo, if I'm not mistaken, Jacob. That is correct. Glatz to Susco. Nice dig there by Dell. Bump set there by Soilis to Lampus. And Freeport will get the point. The diving Grace Thompson unable to play that ball back towards the middle. And a tough ball to play there whenever you're diving at it towards the uh, towards the bleachers. Great hands by the gentleman in the front row. Reflexes like a cat. Snagging that one. Hunter with the kill attempt there. That one's going to go crashing off the ceiling. And... Uh, you know, it's hard to play those balls off of the top of the roof. That one, that time it looked like it kind of rode along the ceiling. Well, it looked like it caught the edge of the basketball hoop and made it kind of kick a, a, a different way, but there's an unforced error. Boy, oh boy. Can't afford those at this stage of the game. Absolutely not. Freeport fresh off of their Whitfield Championship looking very dominant here trying to go for that three-set victory here in round one of the state playoffs. And what a shot there. That time, a kill for Elena Whitlinger. And again, uh, Whitlinger making her presence felt here tonight. An impressive performance by that young lady. And again, he's, I believe he said a freshman, so many years ahead of her, but uh, bursting on the scene here tonight in this PIAA Class 3A first round match against the Whippeal foe. Hunter has that one dug out by Selker and pushed across by Whitlinger, and he saw the Jordan shoulder shrug there. She's like, I didn't mean to do that, but I'll take it. Yeah, that was uh, that was certainly interesting there. But uh, you'll take him when you can get him. And the Freeport fans now encouraging whoever is driving the plum bus to go out there and warm it up. <laughs> it is getting chilly. It's one of my favorite chants. As Lampus gets the kill, kind of finding the... Hole in that front wall there. You saw two on the opposite side of where we're at. Kind of go up for the block. She just pinpoints the weak spot. Gets the kill. And Beach will get the ace. And that will do it here in round number one. Freeport takes it in three straight sets. Yeah, and that's the mark of a champion. And uh, just the... the Reaction there for these Mustangs, heartbreaking. I've been there, Jake. Anybody who's played high school sports and loved it, uh, those emotions are very, very real. They're very, very raw. And uh, I'll tell you what, this Plum team, before we move on to the winners here, uh, they have every right to be proud of where they're at. A state playoff berth, uh, section championship, a great run in the uh, Whippeal playoffs, but uh, Freeport, knocking them off tonight, but uh, congratulations to the Mustangs on what has been a fantastic season, one for the ages in Plum Borough. Uh, as for the Yellow Jackets, Jake, uh, pretty much what you kind of expect to see from them, not always going to play their best, but when it's time to kind of turn on that switch, kind of just, you know, find that extra little something else, they find a way to do so. You saw Plum kind of seize momentum and 
They would. Uh, they'd have nice little runs that did the Mustangs, but uh, by the time we were getting to the latter stages of some of these sets, Freeport using that championship, um, you know, uh, pedigree, I guess, to uh, to uh, kind of fight their way back and, and still these sets and come away with a 3-0 victory. So excellent job by the uh, Freeport Yellow Jackets to really show why they are the 2021 Whippeal Championships and a team to be feared in this PIAA Class 3A bracket. Absolutely, and uh, speaking of that 3A bracket, I have an update. So we know Hampton beat Dubois, and we know Armstrong beat uh, Conneaut. So it'll be Armstrong and Hampton. Well, it'll be Freeport and Twin Valley in the next round in the quarterfinals. So... There, you know, there you have it. We Wait. have our matchups for next round. I'm sorry, here. I was, I was kind of uh, looking and uh, trying to get some information here, Jake. I, I completely blanked on what you said. <laughs> okay, I apologize. <laughs> it happens. So if you could repeat that again for yeah. me and the folks out there. So Twin Valley defeats Holidaysburg three sets to one. Okay. <laughs> the fine folks, thank you so much. The fine folks at Plum uh, saying their goodbyes, and we have certainly appreciated them. They've been just wonderful to us, and uh, we couldn't thank them more for being so kind to us. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it looks like Freeport and Twin Valley will be the matchup there, Jake. And uh, we actually, uh, myself and Josh Schreckengost, uh, covered a Twin Valley-Armstrong uh, softball game in the state playoffs, uh, and that was quite a hike for us. So uh, if they're going to find some middle, middle point between Twin Valley and Freeport, you can imagine, again, we're going by the idea that the next round will, will be a be neutral, neutral site. Yep. Exactly. So if that is, in fact, the case, um, it wouldn't be a surprise to see that game be somewhere in Altoona. Um, well, I mean, if they're just – if it's not neutral site, Freeport holds the higher seed because Twin Valley we'll is a right. three seed out of section, uh, uh, District 3, uh, mm -hmm. Freeport number one seed out of yeah. District 7. So right. So if that's the case, then we'll be right back here in the Hive on Saturday to bring you guys that action, and you better believe we'll be here. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then for the other side of that uh, bracket, the other quarterfinal on that side is Armstrong now. Armstrong Hampton. Hampton. So uh, that game, you know, we always – we've been covering sports around here long enough that we can kind of guess where some of those games are going to be, and I'm going to guess if Hampton – I'm going to guess if Hampton and uh, Armstrong are going to face off, you could see it be somewhere maybe like Fox Chapel, uh, a larger gym like that. Um, but, uh, Jake, I think we got to do our uh, player of the game real fast for, uh, for tonight's match. And we're going to have to go find that person. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and Cassidy Dell, I think, stands out. She had an excellent night. Uh, Ava Soilis with an excellent night as well. Josie Russo down the stretch. Yeah, Josie Russo down the stretch. So we're going to give it to all three of those girls. What do you say, Jake? I like that idea. Do you want to go find them? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it my best shot. Yeah, that's here, gonna be Joe. difficult. Maybe we can even get Coach Phillips up here. We intended to talk to Coach Phillips before this is all said and done, but uh, yeah, just gonna kind of take you again over the bracket while Jake finds our uh, players so, of the match. So, so we got Cassidy Dell. Yes, Josie Russo. That's correct. And Ava Soilis. Ava Soilis. Yep. Okay, I will be back. Yes. And, and, and Coach Phillips. Yes, and Coach Phillips. Okay. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Hopefully we'll get all three of them. If we can't, we'll uh, at least snap a picture of them, Jake, and uh, have that information on our social media platform so we can celebrate tonight's uh, players of the match. But, uh, again, just to kind of recap what we talked about there briefly, uh, the bottom half of this Class 3A Girls Volleyball Championship bracket, heavy with Whippeal teams, as mentioned tonight, two of them facing off and uh, two more will face off in the quarterfinal round. That will be Armstrong after their defeat of Conneaut tonight. They won that in three or four games, three to one. Uh, Hampton uh, victorious on the road against the District 9 champion Dubois area. Uh, not sure how many uh, sets that one was, but they come away victorious on the road. Uh, so there is that sets up a quarterfinal matchup between Hampton and Armstrong. And also, oh, they're going to be taking a picture. So that's going to probably delay our process. Um, so I'm, I'm just probably going to have to sign off. We'd love for you guys to hear from Coach Phillips. Hopefully uh, we can get an interview with him uh, this week before Saturday when they head to uh, take on uh, Twin Valley, wherever that game uh, will be played. From our understanding, I do believe the neutral site uh, only exists in the first round. Therefore, the quarterfinal matchup uh, will take place at a neutral venue, probably somewhere between both 
um, Freeport, and Twin Valley. And as mentioned, Twin Valley, um, a resident of District 3, way off in eastern Pennsylvania. So chances are if they're going to find some middle, uh, middle uh, venue somewhere in between, uh, likely destination could be Altoona, but we'll wait and see. Not sure quite yet, but uh, certainly a proud night for Whippeal Volleyball as Freeport knocks off Plum in three games and both Hampton and Armstrong uh, able to both go on the road nonetheless and collect victories in the first round of the PIAA Class 3A Volleyball Championship. So, again, tonight's players of the match, we had to give it the three because there were just so many different performances. And, again, that's not uh, taken away from the efforts of uh, Sydney Selker as well, uh, the diving attempts on defense by that young lady, uh, mighty impressive here tonight. Uh, but uh, certainly, as Jake mentioned before, he hopped off the mic, uh, that Russo uh, down the stretch was clutch. Uh, Dell pretty uh, consistently dominant all night long. And, uh, of course, uh, Russo, uh, or excuse me, uh, Ava Soilis, who Jake is now speaking with, um, I don't know if they're going to get them over here or not. Might just have to keep talking to you. The only problem is there's no one talking back to me, so I don't know what else to say. But uh, either way, uh, so many good um, efforts from uh, these Yellow Jackets tonight, and uh, so hard to pick just one player to name the uh, players of the game. But we will stick with Ava Soilis, Cassidy Dell, and Josie Russo. Knights, we serve first foundation players of the game. We'll take a quick moment to see whether or not they will be up here. Looks like they're just going to get some shirts and we'll grab a picture. And that will do it for us here on High Top Sports Network. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, Frankel's Neighborhood Market in Saxonburg, Douglas Insurance of Sarver, Steffi's Country Catering, and Adrian, the We Serve First Foundation, and Plum Girls Volleyball Boosters Association. Specifically, want to thank those fine folks as their season concludes. Uh, certainly one to be proud of in Plum Borough. The final here at Freeport, the Freeport Yellow Jackets, three. The Plum Mustangs, zero. And lastly, want to thank you folks out there uh, for tuning in. You have several ways to spend your evenings and spend your time. And this particular night, you chose to spend it with us here on High Top Sports Network. And we are so gracious for that. So make sure you stay tuned. Follow us on our social media platforms to see uh, where we'll be next. I know we have uh, a couple games this week. We also have a football playoff game on Friday. And we will certainly be following. Um, oh, we are going to get Coach Phillips up here. So that's excellent uh, before we do sign off. But make sure you do tune into our social media platforms. Go to our website, hightopsportsnetwork.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, Coach, come on over here. And uh, so you can see where we're going to be next and what games we will be covering. Uh, without further ado, Coach Tom Phillips, newly newly minted uh, newly minted uh, Whippeal champion, uh, first round victory here in the Class 3A bracket of the PIAA tournament. Coach, uh, kind of just take me through it. How was uh, how how the girls look tonight, and are you happy with the performance? Well, I, I think it's. Um... You, you know, the thing that you have to be careful is after uh, an emotional WPIL championship match, it's it's easy to get into that uh, that lull, you know. It's the hangover that, that so many people talk about. But And we talked about that yesterday at practice. Um, you know, obviously we knew coming in that Plum was a, you know, a good solid team. I mean, they had Hampton on the ropes. They, they beat a Thomas Jefferson team at Thomas Jefferson. So, uh, you know, we knew coming in that they were, they were going to be uh, somebody that wasn't going to come in here and just lay down and play. They were, I, I think um, we came out really strong in game one. Um, I think our defense was, was stellar. We, game two, we kind of got complacent a little bit. We missed, I think, six serves in game two. And uh, I think it was one of those situations where it kind of put them back in the ball game. But, you know, fortunately, we didn't get rattled. You know, that's the thing about, about this team. Um, they, they stay calm. You know, they stay nice and calm, you know, and, and just keep plugging away. You know, I told them at the timeout, 
I think it was 23-20, we were down. And I said, listen, there's nothing magical we can do to score those three points except work hard, you know, go back and, and work hard. And I think, uh, you know, we established that middle. I think Josie Russo played extremely well tonight. Um, you know, and Hadley Helgren too. I think Hadley play, had a good game today. You know, Hadley didn't even play Saturday because, it, you know, it's one of those matchup things. And, you know, Autumn had been playing really well. So we kind of went, uh, you know, with Autumn on Saturday, but uh, Hadley really stepped up today and, and had some great blocks and some great swings. So, um, you know, it's nice to keep all three of them fresh, those middles. And Coach, you brought up something really interesting there. It seems like the depth of this team uh, it really showed as well tonight. Uh, how important is that depth? Clearly, you, you feel very comfortable with a lot of your mainstays and a lot of the stalwarts of this program, whether it's Olympus, whether it's Russo in the middle there, uh, some veteran players. But it seems like you have some depth there, even from, a younger, uh, from younger players. Uh, that kind of showed its face here tonight. Yeah, you know, you, you, you look at our two freshmen that, that see varsity time, Elena Wetlinger and, and Leah Schreckengoss, and both of them were very instrumental on the weekend, you know, very, very instrumental. Elena is, is settling in. Elena has, she has just a, a wealth of talent. She really does on the outside. And, you know, she's learning. She's learning how to, to uh, you know, she's a great volleyball player, but, you know, the experience factor is the, is the one thing that you try to get her settled in. But, you know, I will say this, every single day of practice is, is like a war. Uh, I mean, we have, we have enough depth on this team and enough players. You know, I told them yesterday, look, we have four girls that could play libero, four. You know, Kayla Carnahan, you know, she's another one that's, you know, Kayla's a very good defensive player, but, you know, it's day in and day out that they battle back and forth and they make each other battle. Um, I have faith in, in anyone that's sitting on that bench, to be honest with you, uh, as far as putting them in and, and making substitutions and doing things. And, it, and it's nice to kind of get everybody a little bit of playing time here and there and, and, and build that strength because that's, uh, that's a key factor. Yeah, Coach, you talked about that Whippy old playoff. Uh, not only was that championship, I'm, pr I'm sure, pretty emotionally and physically exhausting, but you had that tough semifinal matchup against Armstrong where you guys really had to battle on that one as well. So uh, is it nice for you guys now? It's Tuesday. you got a couple days here before you got to figure out. And I do believe, if I'm not correct, Coach, will Saturday's game be at a neutral venue? Yes, so I believe we'll, it will. And it's, I don't know if you heard already, but uh, uh, it was Pine Valley. I do believe, uh, or Twin Valley, excuse Twin, me. Twin Valley. Twin Valley did come away with a victory in that one. Hampton and Armstrong also victorious in this bottom half of the bracket to show just how good your section was, probably the best section in all of the state this year. Um, but, uh, Coach, is it nice to get that rest, first of all, and maybe a couple days here to kind of just decompress a little bit and and uh, get ready for this uh, quarterfinal game on Saturday. Absolutely. Saturday was very emotional. It really was. I mean, uh, from the standpoint of, you know, you go out there and, and lay it all out there. And, and then, you know, when it's over, uh, we had such a celebration, you know, we, we had fire trucks and police and, you know, through the town of Freeport. And, you know, it's just amazing. Our fan following is, is just absolutely terrific. I mean, if you look at the crowd that we had here tonight, you know, with their their Christmas outfits and everything. I mean, I love these kids. You know, they're they're they are such, uh, uh, you know, it's like having that extra player on the court. But, you know, they follow us wherever we go, whether it's a home game, whether it's an away game. Uh, I'm sure that no matter where we play on Saturday, that we'll probably have a fan bus and and we'll we'll take some people with us. So, uh, but am I surprised that Armstrong and and Hampton came away with wins? Not at all. Uh, I, I definitely think our section was one of the toughest. You know, this year of all the years that that I've been in this uh, crazy coaching uh, scenario, I, I really think that uh, you know this has been one of the toughest sections that we've ever dealt with. I mean, you look at you know night in and night out, every 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 time that you stepped on the court, you know you have a, a team like Knock. You know, Knock is a story program that they're going to play great defense. They're going to give you great games. You know, it, it's just one of those things that you know Armstrong and and Hampton. It, it just battle after battle after battle but it's things like that that make you uh tested you know they test your endurance they test your strength you know people have to step up and go and that's what makes you stronger so i'm hoping that that's uh, something that that carries us uh you know right along in, in the piaa playoffs here well coach you talk about that uh, student section following you guys along to uh wherever the venue may be on saturday 
we're thinking probably somewhere in Altoona-ish. It's like kind of halfway between uh, yourselves and Twin Valley, but we'll have to wait and see where that is. But uh, along with your student section and these great fans that follow you, we intend on being there as well and um, covering what is another nice – uh, what it can be expected to be another nice state playoff run for you and the Yellow Jackets coach. Well, th thank you. I think you guys do a terrific job. And, you know, I, I certainly use your site an awful lot to <laughs> to to scout and watch <laughs> things and, uh, you know, kind of go over the the game films that uh, that I need to go. So I think you guys are terrific with what you do, and we're always uh, very thankful to have you here. So well, well, yeah. right back at you. You're terrific at what you do. We call you the goat around uh, these high top parts. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have any Twin Valley tape on our website for you, coach. So you might have to <laughs> find that elsewhere but well uh, if you can believe this or not i i actually have somebody that was at that game holidaysburg and uh twin valley today so uh I, I i will get some information because you know it's it's always nice to go in with a little bit of fortitude and a little bit of uh sight as far as uh, your opponents and things that you might uh, do but you know i mean we're we're a tough team to to uh, you know kind of plan against i mean if you're trying to defend us and everything we have just so many kids that play multiple positions and you know we move people around and everything we're there's no creatures of habit on our team we we come at you from a lot of different directions so uh you know we're looking forward to the opportunity to just keep moving along here and we're looking forward to catching you again here on high top sports network thank you so much freeport head coach tom phillips after a three victory over the plum mustangs here tonight at the hive in freeport middle school so i think that'll about do it for us um jake deluca bringing you the play-by-play -play all evening my name is joe rhodes thank you so much for tuning in and spending your Tuesday evening with us here on High Top Sports Network. Until next time, we will see you then.